Lord, I pray that every word I speak, you will be glorified. It's your testimony, Lord. And it's great to tell you guys that you are part of this testimony. It's the testimony of the Lord, but you are part of it. You will hear it in half an hour. But it's, I want to start at the beginning. I, I was, I think, 19 when I met Avia, and I, I think quite soon after it, I, I met the Lord together. We were searching for Jesus, and we decided to go on a mission trip to Kenya. And that was actually our first encounter with the Holy Spirit. And it was amazing. We were on fire for Jesus, really on fire. A few years later, we married. Um, we um, rented a house, and I chased actually after the money. I worked hard, like 60, 80 hours a week, and I think it, it goes slightly, 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 we lost the Lord. It was not a day, the one day after the other, but it was just slightly, we lost them. We stopped praying, we worked, and we worked, we were tired, rest, tired, rest, work, work, work. That's what our life looks like in these days. Then I felt like oh, Lord, I'm going to burn out. I can't work anymore. I'm so tired. And it was the place that we came, we felt we should pray. So we start praying, Lord. It was a long time we didn't pray, but we prayed, Lord, please help us. Please make a way. And he did. Two weeks after it, he, on a miraculous way, I sold my company. I was 29. I sold my company for a lot of money. And I thought, wow. This is amazing. I have a lot of money. I bought a nice house to live. Um, we decided to um, have a sabbatical of three months. And I thought maybe it's also nice to invest in something I like. Just, just what I like. So I've, I met a guy a few weeks later. He was a developer in South Africa. And he uh, made me enthusiastic to come to South Africa to build a second house. And so I thought, oh, that would be nice. So. I thought, at least I have a nice trip. So I went to South Africa, um, bought two pieces of land, built a house on it, uh, went back home, of course, not with the house built on it, but um, with the plans to build a house. A year later, it was finished. And I had a few, a few months, but after two months, I get bored. I said to Avia, I need to do something. So I raised up, I had already a company with my business partner and he said to me, yeah, Peter, you can work easy, uh, like four days in this company. So I joined him. Um, we were partners. And actually, after a few months, I felt I can't do it half. And I said to Avia, let's go one time for it. Let's, I, 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 I go for it. And then before I'm 40, I'm financially done. We can do, we can travel, we can do what we want. So actually, we fell in the same trap again. So we worked, I think, five years long. We worked, it felt like day and night, even literally sometimes in the night I worked. And um, we, get, we had a crazy times. I think we, we raised up in, I think, seven years, I raised up five companies. My wife got five kids in the same, around the same age. So you can imagine how our lives look like. It was crazy. Till we get at the moment that we really felt like at the same point, we can't, we can't, we are so tired. And of course we were tired. Then um, my wife said, maybe we should go to South Africa. She was never been there because she was preg pregnant or just delivered. So it was actually, but it was now the fifth was, was born. It was, uh, she, it was three months. So we, my parents looked after the children and we went together to South Africa. We had amazing 10 days and we felt we should take a sabbatical of three months. So. We decided in one and a half year, so I had a point on the horizon where I can work through because I was already tired, but I thought if I have a point, three months sabbatical in one and a half year, I can do it. So I, I, we came back and we went on and on again, but actually I didn't manage to get that last one and a half year. So after a year, I got problems with my business partner, not with him personally, but the visions were split. We were always one heart, one mind, and one purpose. But at that stage, he wanted to grow, and I want to rest. And I felt like, I can't. I don't want to invest more. I don't want, and he want to go. So then we hired some, somebody, an expert, to look after our company. And he said, after some conversations, he said, Peter, you are the problem. 
You are the one that is standing in the way of the growth of the company. You want to rest, sell your shares. And, and I thought, yes, that, that's nice. So I, but I felt like that, 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 that thought of rest, not under the pressure, not work and work, that would be nice. So three months before we went to the sabbatical, I sh sold my shares and I was already kind of free. I had a few companies, but I wasn't that involved. Then the sabbatical came and we went to South Africa, but because we rested already, we had a hunger for the Lord. We, we, we were thinking, we remembered the days that we had the counter with the Holy Spirit. We were thirsty for what Jesus did in our life, but we were lost it completely. So we went to South Africa with a desire to meet Jesus. So we went to Hootspruit, the place where the house was, close to the Kruger Park, and we visited some churches and we realized the Dutch were always, also were here, but there was a lot of traditional churches, Dutch Reformed Church, and we couldn't find what we were looking for. And I was almost desperate, and I re remember that somebody gave me a number of a man called Richard van der Ruyt. I've never met him, but they said, he's a Dutch guy, and he's also in Hootspruit. Maybe you should phone him. And I phoned him, and he said, yes, there is a small church in Hootspruit, and you can go tonight to it. And we went to that small church, and it felt literally like a warm bath. Before the sermon was already there, I fell in love already with the people. They were so kind to us. They were so enthusiastic about Jesus and so loving us that we really felt like this is home. So we had an amazing, amazing time there. We didn't know at that stage that it was a 412 church because they were not at that, uh, yeah, the leaders knew about it, but the saints, it was just a lovely church. And Richard and Sue, they started discipling us. And I think two, two times in a week we were there and we enjoyed so much to be discipled and we fell in love again with the Lord and Jesus and we were growing and growing. So we had an amazing time, but at all things comes an end. So after three months, we were prayed out. I can still remember it that they prayed us out and we felt, ooh, from next week we are still back in the Netherlands, back in the Dutch Reformed Church. How are we gonna do that? So then we get a prophetic word in that same meeting about um, impalas, that I, w I was a male impala and I had to find water for the, for the family, for the females and for the children. And I felt that the Lord said, Peter, you have to look after the church because I, th I thought that the church was the problem. But that wasn't, but I felt that the church, because I had such a beautiful experience in Hootspout, and in a way it's true, but actually it wasn't the well, it was Jesus himself. But I, I didn't realize that at that moment. So we came back in the Netherlands. We were looking for a church. We couldn't find a church. We were wrestling. And actually what happened, that I sl slowly, slowly, I fell back in the same patterns. Not that I worked so hard because I decided I'm never going to work that hard. And, I, and I, it was not necessary to work anymore. But I thought I need to do something. But what happened, I fell actually in sin again. And that was like a wall between Jesus and me. So to, give the good, to keep the good feeling of South Africa, I thought I buy a land cruiser. Because in South Africa, we've been there, everybody is... <laughs> So I bought a brand new white Land Cruiser, and, and it's part of the story because it, I, I, it was brand new, and I get it on the 3rd of June, but the 13th of June, like four weeks later, I want to go away, I couldn't find my keys, and I was like, where are my keys? And I found my spare key, walked outside the door, and I realized my car is stolen. And the first thought that came in my mind, if you don't have two keys, you are not insured. Oh, and I thought, that's a problem. That's a car of 100,000 euros, and I thought, I have a problem. But this just give an imp impression how I was. I was just, I made my own plans. I'd never discussed something with the Lord. I thought, I have a problem, and the solution is, I do like they break in. They stole also my key problem solved. So I said to Avia, I need to fix this problem. Uh, I break open an old window of my house. Uh, I say to the police and insurance, they stole my key. And, my, and Avia said, no, 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 that's not good. I said, Avia, hey, two questions. Is the car really stolen? Yes. And am I insured for it? Yes. So I thought, come on, you know, it's to be sure. So I did it easy. I lied. And Avia said, no, no, I want to do anything with it. So I said, okay, bring the children to school. I fix it. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> so 
So my brother, he was my insurance agent. He phoned me. <laughs> yeah, lit literally. I sent a guy that repair your lock in your door and I thought, oh no, you know, and an hour later somebody is, is replacing your locks because they stole your keys and my mom phoned me. Hey Peter, I heard about your story. Um, do you sleep tonight? I thought, do you sleep tonight? Yeah, they, 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 they break in, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, no, no, no problem, you know. <laughs> but I thought after a few weeks, I want to remember it. You know, after a few weeks, it's gone and problem solved, money's back and so, but it didn't happen. I, 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 my feelings went worse and worse and we were looking for a church and on a Sunday we thought oh, this is maybe a nice church and we had a good service and then there was communion and the pastor did an invitation, guys we can have bread and wine but first make sure that it's right between you and God and immediately the Holy Spirit showed me about the car and I can tell you I was very honest to the Lord and in my quiet prayer I said Lord please Forgive me about lying about my car. And I felt really convicted. I, I hardly cr cry. Then we had communion. And after communion, there's coffee. You know how it is in the church. You walk to the coffee corner. Somebody came to me. And it was half an hour after communion. He said, hey, Peter, how are you doing? Long time ago. And I heard about your car. Did they really break in your house? <laughs> because... Because there was a tribe of Eastern Europe stealing the cars without a key. They, they catch the signal of the key and they did it with a laptop. And I thought, if I say now no, I have a serious problem, you know. Because then the, the, the story in, in, my, in, my, in my region is going that I lied and I can get any problems. So I said, yeah, they really break in. You know, and at that moment you were laughing. But I could cry and cry and cry. Because I said, you know, I felt, I, I drove home and I thought, Lord... I'm not worthy. And the Satan came accusing, accusing, accusing. And I get so depressive about it. I didn't know what to do. And so a good friend of mine, he took me a day out um, because he saw I was not doing well. And um, I make it a little bit quicker. So he took me a day out. And in that day out, I received from Evangelist a very small book. And, you know, I wasn't a reader. So I thought, okay, thank you. Put that book away and went, 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 went further. And I think it's a few weeks later, it was September um, 2016, and there was a day we didn't have nothing to do. Just a Saturday, the garden was done, everything was done, and my wife said, Peter, what are we going to do today? And I thought, yeah, this is good. let's go for a boat trip. And she said, no, we are going to do nothing today. Now, in my life, nothing. That was, that, was, that was really not, I've never experienced what is to do. We were always busy. So I thought for a bike, no, said nothing. Just sit on a chair, uh, maybe read a book. So I gave the children some money to go out to the city with the boat. And I just sat on a chair. We chatted a little bit. And then she said, maybe we can read a book. I thought, okay, maybe I can read a book. So I took, I thought that's thin book because reading was not my thing. So I started reading that book about... Um, the Good Foundation, it was a book about the foundation, and, and suddenly I saw my problem. I want to have a relationship with Jesus, but I was built my faith on sin, what I didn't confess. And that book was showing me very clear that if you have to build your house, you first have to dig through the sand till you find the rock. And at that moment, I realized what I all did wrong, and it felt like I fainted because I couldn't breathe again. All the sins were so heavy on me, I thought, oh no, so I, I thought I, I, I faint. So I put my book away and I thought maybe I can try to sleep or do if I sleep because I need to escape here. And but suddenly Avi said, hey, are you, are you already with reading already? What, what? And, and then I said, yeah, this book is too radical. I can't read. And she asked why. And then I start sharing about, I'm so, I feel so um, overwhelmed by everything. And she asked, what then? And I said, yeah. I have so much um, black money, so actually money that I didn't pay tax of, and I thought, oh, Lord. And Avi said, yeah, but I feel bad about the car, and I said, oh, yeah, that's also a big thing in my life, you know? <laughs> so we, we, we went on our knees, because Avi said, let's ask forgiveness. So we went on our knees, asked forgiveness, and we felt like, okay, you know? So that day, the, the children came home, and everything was back to normal, and then that night, I woke up, and um, it was, I think, three o'clock, and I was completely wet. Like, my shirt was like that wet. And I felt like 
I have, I have a serious problem. So I, I woke up my wife and I said, Avia, I really need to share things that you don't want to hear because I also was addicted to porn. And I confessed everything what, to my wife. And it felt like that, that the Holy Spirit lifted something for me that I really was free. Even it was so difficult for her to hear. But for me, it felt now I am free. Now everything is in the light. So the next day we went to the church, the Dutch Reformed Church, and it was a beautiful message about Paul that was, um, he thought he was following Jesus, but he wasn't. And I feel like that's exactly me. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I wasn't. So I was, I don't know what happened, it was just the Holy Spirit, but I couldn't remember what he thought, but I was crying and crying. Now I've never seen people crying in the Dutch Reformed, but I was trying, I was crying. So um, we went out, um, I met a friend of mine, and he said, what, what, is, what is happening with you? And I shared what happened, and I said to him, I'm going to make everything right with the Lord today. So I think it took literally two weeks to make everything right with people, with my family, with the police, with the insurance company, with my employees. It took me two or three weeks full time, but after that time I felt, now I'm free. And the Lord spoke to Avia, stay in a Dutch Reformed church, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do it. So we stayed, served, gave Bible study, and then suddenly Richard van der Ruyt, he came to the Netherlands. Richard and Sue, they were moved in that time to Cape Town, um, and then he, he needed to come to the Netherlands for a visa um, extension. So, and he came to my house, he slept in my uh, guest house, and he came, and the only thing he could talk about was 412. Andrew Shelley, Will Murray, Joshua Generation, Mervis, 412. And I thought, you know, what is 412, you know? Let's talk about Jesus and the Bible, because that's where I excited. No, man, 412. What, I've never seen something like that in Cape Town. Peter, you need to go... Go to the Isle of, in Isle of Man. He shared about everything. Eight congregations planted. Miracles happened. Okay. I thought, I need to see that. I really need to see that. So, and in that time, Richard was also connecting with the people of the church, the pastor and some elders. And they were all, yeah, he was so full of 412 and what Jesus was doing over there that we really thought, okay, we need to go to see that. So, three years later... Oh, no, sorry, a half year later, three years ago, we were here with 12 people from the Dutch Reformed Church, including me. I was still in the Dutch Reformed Church, and we came to the conference at the Isle of Man. And I didn't know anything about doctrine. I didn't know exactly what they teach, but what I saw was the life of the saints. What I saw, that these people really love Jesus. And even what doctrine it is, I want to serve Jesus in that way. So I was so excited, but then I asked the Domine, the Dutch Reformed pastor, what, what is your opinion? And he was quite critical, and that was difficult for me because I thought, okay, isn't this that not good? And I had so many questions, so, but I felt, okay, the door is closed for the Dutch Reformed Church. I thought, that this is, it's not going to happen, and I really had faith that the Lord wanted to do something special. And then we went back to the Netherlands, and a day later, a guy called Arian, he phoned me, Peter, I feel that the Lord wants to, to plant a church in Oudewater or somewhere where you live. So let's go with the whole group, pray every day, or every week we prayed for it, and go to South Africa to speak with Andrew and Will, and check the churches, because we have been to a conference, but we really want to see uh, how the churches look like, because they can, we, we are Dutch, so we want first to prove before we do something. <laughs> we, we don't make quick decisions. So I thought, wow, let's go to Cape Town. I, was, I think I was never been in Cape Town, because I always went to Limpopo province, and we went to Cape Town. We had, the first day, we had the whole morning with Andrew Shelley. The second afternoon, we had a um, session with Will, and it was, it was beautiful, but for me, it was like, what's happening? It was like over my head. But I was excited, and I really had faith that the Lord something was going to do. And that evening, Avi said to me, Peter, what if the Lord is calling you? And I thought, no, 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 <laughs> somebody else had the calling. And so the next day, <laughs> the next day we had a, a meeting, the last session with Andrew Shelley, and we just had breakfast, and we were on a table with Andrew Shelley, you must remember it, and we were just sharing about the things um, 
just chat about, no, I don't know, about, about life, you know? And suddenly he said, Peter, now I can see it. You guys, you have the calling. And I thought, <laughs> you know? But I realized he's right. I, I knew it because I knew it. But the first, uh, the first question I said, but, but how? And Andrew said, come on, you will plant, I will send troops. Because a lot of saints are excited. They want to go in the nation. So I post on Facebook, who wants to go to the nails? And they will come. I thought, okay, you know, cool. <laughs> And I thought, yeah, but Andrew, you know, I've never preached. I can't. And, he's, and Andrew encouraged me with um, the Lord often doesn't um, call to equip, but he equips the ones he calls. I thought, okay, okay. <laughs> Technical, you are right, but I, I can't see it yet, you know. So, but we, Afi and I, we really felt the Lord is calling us. And then Mervis prophesied and he, it was spot on. And I was, I felt like, Oh, Lord, we need, we need to go. We need to have faith. But the group didn't know that yet at that stage. So we had a conversation. Andrew encouraged us, encouraged us. And I thought, okay, let's say, tell it to the group. So I think a few days later in a restaurant, we, we met the group and said, guys, we feel that we have a calling. Y you? You know? <laughs> Dutch people are straight. Yeah, but it's not a weird. It's not weird. I could. I, I. I also thought. Yeah, I can't see it, but I really have faith. Okay. So I thought. I. I. I'm. I'm gonna do it. I have faith. And okay. So, but from that time, it was quiet. Nobody. Everybody was thinking. Okay. You know, Peter has a calling. Uh, the others not. Uh, what is going to happen? And I also thought, what's going to happen now? So I went. Um, we went home. Um, had some beautiful prophecies. Uh, during that time, but I didn't know how to plant. I didn't know how to start. And then a man, a fella is his name, he's a pastor in Queenstown, 412 pastor. He was also at the conference. He came to the Netherlands in January, so two months after the calling. And the first question he asked me, Peter, where is the church? And I thought, I don't know, you know. Uh, I don't know how to preach, and nobody is joining the church, and yeah, but you are disobedient. You just have to plant. You have a calling. Okay, so I thought, yeah, technical, he's right. <laughs> and I had the faith, so I just have to do it. So that night, it was a Monday night, we confessed our sin to the Lord that we, did, we were not obedient, and we decided to plant on 8 March, and the guy, Vella, promised me, in April, I'm coming for three months, I understand you don't know anything, but we didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit, we have seen it, but I've never prophesied, I've never preached, I've never spoken, spoke, speak in tongues. And I really thought, how is this possible? Because I saw all these leaders from 412, you know. I thought, these guys, you know, look at me. So, but we planted, and the first service was on 8 March. And after eight days, Monday, 15 March, COVID came, lockdown came, and I felt as a rat in a trap. I really believe if I knew that COVID had came, I will never have planted because I didn't have the faith. But I couldn't go back. People joined the church. Things, on, things started to happen. And I thought, oh, Lord. And every time I phoned Andrew, Andrew, what do I have to do now? And he encouraged me and he helped. And just take my message and just copy it and try to bring it in your own word, words. Start just with Acts 2, 42, 47 and just try to copy me. I thought, okay. So just, I, I listened to his message, copied it in my own word, and preached it to the church. <laughs> and I think after six, maybe eight weeks, I experienced that the Lord was going to tell me what to preach. So suddenly I felt that I could hear the Lord and I received messages and I started preaching about what I received from the Holy Spirit. And that was so amazing. And then the church was growing, people are joining, and I thought even people were moving to Audawat to join our church. And I thought, Lord, what is happening? You know, how is this possible? And then we realized some people have demons. And we knew that the word said, you can cast out demons. But I didn't know. I really did. But we could see it on, in how they, how they did. We could see this is not good. This is actually demonic. So we phoned South Africa. South Africa, we have a problem. <laughs> but 
they, they started to give us an online Zoom course about deliverance. Four nights with, with a bunch of people of the Netherlands we, we were in, you know it. They teach us and then we just did it. We prayed for people and we saw the demons flew. And that was the first time I actually really saw Jesus was moving. And it was amazing. We were literally almost on the, on the table like, yes, 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 we saw Jesus working, you know. But that gave us so much faith. And I think in that season, we had every week deliverance. I wish I was it today, but in that time we prayed so much and testimonies and testimonies and the Lord was stirring things up in the church. And then, I think it was after a year, the Lord told me, Peter, now it's time to speak about the gifts of the Spirit. And I thought, Lord, no. <laughs> how? I can't, how can I teach people I, things I don't know? But he said, trust me. So I first message was to the church, are you ready? To experience the Holy Spirit. How will you react if it's going to happen? So I prepared the people and then I had so many questions of how does it work? How? And then I think Andrew encouraged me to go to South Africa to get discipled for a week. So I flew to Lucas, Lucas Nakos. He took me one week in his house and he told me everything about the Holy Spirit, about prophecy, about... And, and of the first, I phoned Andrew about a message about speaking in tongues because I phoned Andrew and Andrew said, oh, I have asked Christine for a message. So we, that's it's beautiful. He, he sent me a message about speaking in tongues and Avi and I were watching that message and we were finished and okay, it's about, we need to have faith to tap in. So I said to Avi, I count down to three and we both pray in tongues after because we both felt... <laughs> But I need to have, we felt it's coming, you know, you feel it, but you have to have faith to open your mouth. So we did it. And Avia, she was watching me. So I tried, I, I spoke a word like Calabas, and she was lying on the ground, <laughs> laughing at me. But I felt. <laughs> so I went to Lucas and I said, Lucas, I feel I can pray in tongues, but I'm not sure. It's also a beautiful story. We were in his kitchen, and he said, just pray in tongues, and I will do it also. So I, 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 I tried to pray faithfully in tongues, and then he looked at me, Peter, I really feel like you are speaking in tongues. I can hear it. And I thought, Lucas, are you, are you encouraging me now, or is it really? What? He was, like, upset that I thought he was, look, lying. No, he said, no, I can really feel it, you know. So that built up faith, and then I thought, okay, let's go for it. So I went back. And the first Sunday, I preached about prophesying, New Testament prophecy, how it should look like. And I said, amen. And I said, okay, church, if we really believe this, we're going to pray if the Lord starts speaking to us now. And, I, and we, I prayed over the congregation, and it was quiet. And for me, it felt like an hour, but probably it was a few minutes. And then one lady, she stood up, and she said, I saw a picture. And she shared that picture, and somebody cried and she came, that's exactly for me. And, and so it went on and on and on. And people received pictures, learned to prophesy. People were encouraged and we really believed what the scriptures say. It's true because we can experience it. So, so I said to Avia, the next week we're going to uh, preach about speaking in tongues. And you also, I know you speak in tongues, even if it's a few words, you have to be faithful and pray for the ladies. And a few other ladies also received it. And I said, I'm also going to pray. And we, we, it's not about how much we received. It's about, it's about the power of the Holy Spirit. So we have to be faithful. We have to trust Jesus that he's going to do something. Even if you can't, because I thought, Lord, if I look to me, I think I'm so, so just normal, you know. I'm, I'm nothing. But I thought... If he's going to do it, if I trust him. So we, a priest, and there was so much uh, spiritual battle at that moment, but we stepped out, we prayed for people, and I think more than 50% of the people received a personal tongue in that Sunday. And it was amazing, and the Lord is adding people. I think uh, we baptized 50, 51 today. <laughs> we baptized 50 people and one today. And so it's going on and on and on. And I can truly say to you, it's not about me. I felt like 
it, 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 it was not that I feel like I can't do anything. It's, but it, was, it felt really, when Andrew called me, it felt for me like I'm a good carpenter and tomorrow you have to do a surgeon, a heart surgeon. You think, you know? <laughs> and even preaching, I had never preached before and even, and I couldn't. If you can ask Avi if you don't believe, she thought if I have to listen the rest of my life to that man, I don't know if I want to join that church. <laughs> And that's what she literally said. That's what she literally said. And it was true because people who, were, people who were at the beginning of the congregation, they knew I am different now than I was two and a half years ago. So I can share so much more testimonies, but I think I've said what I want to say, and that what I want to say is Jesus can do much more than what you think. If I knew that COVID came 100%, 100% I've never planted, because I looked to myself. I thought, and it was true, if I looked to myself, it is impossible. It was impossible by man's strength, 100% sure. But if we want to do the impossible, we have to have faith. We have to have faith that he can do more than you believe. If you look to yourself, you think, I can't do it. But if you hear him talking, please do it, because if he is going to do it. And do you know the last words that Jesus said to his disciples? Do you know? It's in Acts 1. He's talking about a gift. He said, I am... Gonna to the, I'm going to the Father, but I'm going to give you a gift. And he was talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And what he said to his disciple, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and at the end of the world. And do you believe that the disciples were at the end of the world? Do you believe the disciples went to Isle of Man in the Netherlands? No. But I really believe that this scripture is also for you. If you have faith, Jesus will baptize you to do and to go at the, till the end of the world. If you are thirsty, stand up. If you are thirsty for more of the Holy Spirit, come. Jesus said, let everybody who is thirsty drink. Drink from him. And he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Streams of living waters will flow out of your belly. I really believe that the Lord has so much more for you all but the problem is, and I had the same, I'm speaking about experience, we are looking to ourselves. We are looking to our comfort. We are looking to our impossibilities. But today, I really believe he will impart you faith that you can do the things he has prepared. And I really want to pray for you. Jesus, come with your Holy Spirit. We are thirsty for you, Jesus. We want to drink for you, from you, Jesus. Please, Lord, fall, fall with your Holy Spirit on this crowd, Lord. Let us drink from the well, Jesus, that streams of living waters will flow out of us, Lord, that we go out in the nations and beyond, Lord, that we have the power from you to go where you want to have us, Lord. I pray it in your name, Jesus. Give this beautiful gift, Lord, the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we so desperate need. We need you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in every one of us. That every day we look at you, Jesus, and not to ourselves. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.